Hello YouTube, hi, this is Mark, Nixon Motorsports. This channel is all about motorsports from racing to exotic cars and even simulators. You know, we have a strong focus on this channel in racing due to the fact that we have an active race program underway. Um, so we create videos, you know, and speak to the products that we have tested, uh, that we've tried over the years and so on. So we try to share lessons learned, tips, and of course speak to some of the products that we do use ourselves. Today's video, we will focus on engine bay heat and how you may be able to reduce engine bay heat itself. So this is a heavy focus on race cars, but, but street performance cars, it also applies. So let's get into it, all right? Come on. Before I get started in today's video, I need to disclose to you our relationship with Advanced Thermal Products. We, we have a business relationship that allows us to offer you a 5% discount should you choose to use ATP for any of your heat management needs. You know, having said that, we've been using ATP or Advanced Thermal Products now for several years, and we believe in the product and the offer and, and the effectiveness it has on reducing heat in your engine bay. So let's get on with this video. I'll talk to you later in the video about how you can, you can find um, or receive a 5% discount should you choose to use AT ATP, okay? Let's get in the video. So what are the benefits in controlling heat in your engine bay? Probably pretty obvious, I think, to most. Most will understand that excessive heat is not good for engine's performance and reliability. Of course, engines will produce heat, right? The exhaust gases, you know, as fuel mixture is superheated, you know, in the combustion chamber itself. Engine bay heat is something that many racers do not put a lot of time and energy into. Here are a few reasons why I think you might want to consider a little focus or a little attention in this, this matter, okay? So ambient air temperature is the first thing that comes to mind. Higher engine bay temperatures do have an impact on your overall ambient inlet air temp. Though you might not think of it so much, um, many of you will wrap your inlet tubes and, and so on, um, bringing your cold air from the outside into your engine bay. But the overall ambient temperature in the engine bay itself does play an effect into the overall air inlet temperature. And so higher air temp reduces power, right? So that's the first point. You know, so the, the second one um, that comes to mind is fuel temperature. So when we think about performance, um, it's, it's air, right? It's the air inlet temperature. It's also fuel that's mixed with the air. And so a colder air fuel mix is always more or provides more performance than than otherwise so you wouldn't think of fuel temperature necessarily from an engine ambient temperature discussion right but back in the same concept as as air inlet temp the higher engine bay temperatures you have will affect and I've seen this through data logging on our race car, it will affect your fuel temperature slowly to increase. If you think about it, especially in EFI-based high-pressure uh, fuel systems, your fuel is constantly being pressurized, um, running down the rails to your engine where it's heated you know, uh, in the rails themselves as it's prepping to enter the motor, but, but that fuel is also returned back into the tank. Um, so conversations as to tank location, um, having the bypass uh, return back into you, your fuel cell or tank as close to the tank as you can, you know, all those things are good ideas. But fuel temperature is affected, to my point on point number two, by engine ambient temperature, okay? So the third that comes to mind is, is just overall engine uh, temperature, right? The cooling system itself for the engines have to keep up with the engine to keep it in its operating window. And excessive engine bay temperature does have an impact uh, to a degree with the engine's cooling system's performance itself. So 
point four that comes to mind is, is, is basically just tying these together in overall engine performance. Most modern engines have ECUs. Um, and these ECUs have trim tables that monitor the engine's parameters like water temperature, fuel temp, air inlet temp, you know, manifold pressure, et cetera, et cetera. My point is that the ECUs will take corrective actions to protect the engine by altering timing and fuel. These will reduce power. The heat in the engine bay or heat in general um, for your engine has an overall impact of your performance. So I'll show you um, ATP's products here in a few minutes and, and why I'm going to recommend those. But before I do that, just a general discussion about, you know, well, what can you do to reduce the heat in your engine bay? And, you know, the first is heat shields um, around your exhaust system. If you think of the, the greatest generator of heat, uh, it is going to be your exhaust system. So your headers, your turbos, your downpipes, and so on. So the first would be exhaust system. Um, and the second, you know, shielding around your, your turbos, if it is a turbo uh, charged car itself. Um, many of you, and I've seen this over the years, I've done it myself um, and, and do it still, um, will address, you know, good airflow, um, routing air, um, external air from uh, outside that's cold um, into the engine, um, away from heat and protect it along the uh, path is always a very good idea. Um, so the fourth one that comes to mind is, is, is really, you know, while you're not really reducing heat or moving heat out of the engine bay itself, just protecting, protecting wiring, critical wiring, uh, you know, fluid lines, you know, with with thermal shielding uh, is actually a very good practice uh, and highly recommended. This leads to what I believe is the greatest benefit you will have in removing engine heat from your engine bay. Um, and any amount of heat that you can remove, extract um, out of the bay will help you with your overall performance. You know, so as I, as I as I started this video, you know, I, again, I mentioned the relationship with ATP or Advanced Thermal Products. And again, our website will, will uh, provide details on how to order and your disc, discount and so on should you decide to go this way. Um, they are very, very experienced with building custom uh, Inconil shields for your exhaust, inlets, turbos, and so on. And you can find them actually at uh, ATP Wrap. Dot com so www.atprap.com or go to nixonmotorsports.com look in our, our home page uh, towards the bottom of the page you'll find some details on advanced thermal products and uh, the disco discount code and so on there okay so my preference my preference is to have the Inconel uh, custom shields built versus trying to wrap the headers with you know those various cool products you know some specialty paints out there and so on I've tried those I would imagine many of you have as well um, they may be benefit a touch um, they're definitely lower cost um, they they do not perform anywhere near um, the the performance of of a Inconel heat shield itself so I keep mentioning Inconel, if I pronounce it correctly, uh, hopefully, hopefully that's the right way to pronounce it. Um, you know, so what is this stuff? Um, it's a nickel-based super alloy. Um, it is considered a space age super alloy, alloy that actually makes space travel possible. Uh, it's been around for a few years. You know, Formula One and other mo motorsport teams have been using Inconel for some time now. So why do you need to work with ATP? You know, if, if Inconel is just this special space age material, <laughs> go buy it yourself and make your own shields. I, pretty tough to do. Um, simply, this is an extremely hard, hard to machine and shape due, due to its hardness. Um, and it's extremely difficult to weld 
Um, in fact, the only one alloy of the Inconel family is the 625 that is sort of weldable. Um, but uh, back to the, you know, why do you need ATP? Um, one, their work is fantastic. Um, they will take your exhaust, your turbo, your project, um, and build very professional custom shielding for that using Inconel. So um, that's why I believe you need to use ATP. So this Inconel, you know, why is it used? What's, what's the big deal about it? You know, I mentioned it's space age alloy, sounds fancy, right? But um, uh, a couple other things, um, the oxidation and corrosion resistance properties for the material are extremely strong. Um, of course, it's used in heat barriers, uh, so it can handle heat extremely well. In fact, when it's heated, it creates this, this passive layer, they call it this oxid oxidation layer, which actually helps protect itself. Um, in fact, it protects its self, its strength, over a wide range of temperatures, whereas materials, um, other materials would, would experience creep, which stretch a little bit. Inconel, under those extreme heating um, conditions, will not fade or stretch or creep like typical materials or metals will. So in the Inconel family, again, this is a super alloy, um, nickel-based actually alloy. Um, it comes in four primary versions or alloys. Um, just for reference, if you're curious, uh, 600, 625, and, and remember 625 is the only alloy that's sort of weldable, uh, 718, and the last one is the X750. Okay, so if you really want to remove heat from your engine bay dramatically, uh, my recommendation is to use Inconel and have ATP build you a custom shield for your headers at least. Um, but I would suggest if, if you have a turbo, include the turbo and your exhaust or downpipes um, as far as you can away from the engine bay. So that would be what I recommend. So let's think about, let's think about, well, what are the negatives, right? I make it sound like it's this beautiful, perfect, fixes everything in the world, right? So uh, first thing, well, it will add a small amount of weight. It's lightweight material, but it will add a small amount of weight to your overall weight if that's a concern. Um, probably the, the, the biggest issue is cost. Um, you, you will have to pay to have this built if you're going to do it right and um, professional. Um, probably the biggest negative that comes to mind, this, at least based on my experience, is the, um, the demand it puts on your exhaust system, primarily your headers. And uh, so I, I've been using, uh, you know, as this Formula 1000 project, for, for those of you who have been watching, um, it is a motorcycle engine based power plant. Uh, I've been using four into two into one headers for quite some time um, and had my Inconel heat shield built for those headers. Um, no slam against Brooks. Uh, they have nice, great products, but they were relatively thin wall stainless. And I did experience um, headers that would crack over time. Uh, now, this wasn't the first outing, the first race and so on, but, uh, you know, throughout the the course of a, a, a race season, um, I did have to replace headers um, simply because the amount of heat that is contained inside the header shield itself is extreme. Uh, and so that does put uh, a burden onto your overall header. So you need to think about that as a negative. Um, I think the only other the only other negative that comes to mind and back again, why I recommend using ATP is you know, I mentioned this to a degree, but this is extremely hard material to work with. Um, you, you need to have this, uh, you need professionals that know how to work with this material to build a, a custom heat shield. So that, you can't do it yourself. I would say that would be a negative. So, uh, what are the positives, right? Um, well, you reduce the engine bay heat uh, dramatically. Um, 
I, I think another positive is the shield, um, the Inconel shield itself, it's not a disposable I item. Um, I found that having my shields built uh, for specific use headers and applications, I never have to build them again. They seem to be durable and last uh, uh, indefinitely. Um, so that's good. Uh, I would say that's a positive. So let, let's turn to the uh, Formula 1000, my current race car. Um, let me show you what the shield looks like. Uh, just walk around that a little bit. We'll take it off. I'll, I'll have you look at it um, when it's off the car as well. But let me just spin around here to the race car and walk over here so you can see. Here's the headers themselves. If I just point these out, you can see this material here that is looks like a, almost aluminum foil. Um, this is the heat shield that I'm talking about, okay? And I have it from the headers all the way to my small exhaust up to the um, back side of the header to, or the uh, uh, pipe here itself. So if I come over here to the other side of the engine, you can see, here I'll point at this, you can see the, the header itself. Now this is just a heat shield blanket that I've always been putting in place just uh, as a, a habit, to be honest with you. Um, but you can see the detail of the uh, heat shield, how it, it really encompasses the entire header itself into this, this overall blanket. Okay, so that's inside the Formula 1000. So, you know, I fired up the engine. I have a, um, an IR app and device uh, for my mobile phone that actually shows you the, the thermal temperature um, and it shows you the um, approximated temperature in Fahrenheit um, as I move around. So let's move to that. Let me just show you, the, show you this little video clip. I won't be talking through this, um, but I'll come back on here and talk uh, at, after I show you this little piece. All right, come on. Yeah, so, so that's, uh, that's what uh, the IR temperature uh, um, gauge is showing. Now, look, the race car's sitting here on the stands, it's idling, um, it's nowhere near up the temperature um, that you, you would expect on the track. Um, I do monitor ambient bay temperature uh, as well, and um, among many other sensors. Um, that's a new sensor that I've just put in the car, so I, I'm not going to be able to give you a, a before and an after, unfortunately. Um, I will do my best to have a follow-up video uh, on this topic, though. I think, uh, you know, relative, rel relative information would be very useful on that, but I'm absolutely convinced that, that my overall um, engine performance and, and cooling is down dramatically based on the Inconel shields. So let me, let me walk over here. I'm gonna show you, um, now this is, this is an Inconel shield that is removed from my race car. And this is a, um, this is actually my older unit. This is off of a, a 421 uh, header that I talked about. So let me pan down here so you can see what this looks like. Um, tip this thing up a little bit. So this actually, it's extremely light. In fact, here, I have it on a scale here. I just wanted to give you an idea of the weight. So let's see, stay, hang on a second. So with it sitting here on a scale, 
So if you can see that, it says 2.3 pounds. That's how much this particular piece weighs. So it does add a couple pounds. Um, but this is what the material looks like. If I take this half off, or attempt to, you can see you can see what it looks like on the inside. Kind of interesting. Um, very very hard. If I sit here and and try to squeeze, flex it, move it, pretty tough to do. I would say um, one tip for you is if you have headers. This thing's moving. If you have headers, um, like I do, where the the upper the upper headers are from the from the bolt to the to the head are um, loose, they're not welded. They have flex, and and through the collector itself, the header can actually move. I actually um, found it's significantly better to send your send a, a dummy head um, where ATP can mock that up, put your, mount your headers actually on the head or heads, and um, then they can build the shield that way. Uh, I did that for my, my newest uh, headers that are um, uh, Voodoo headers, by the way, which are fantastic. And, and uh, it bolted up with zero issues at all, so I I, I would highly recommend that as a as a must do. Okay. So hey, that's about it for this video. Um, I hope you find find this uh, useful, and um, if you are inclined, curious, or you actually want to build a professional grade shield for your exhaust system using the Inconil material, I would, um, I would definitely suggest ATP. Now, um, you can go to them directly, atprap.com, uh, and order. Um, we don't need to be involved in that at all. Um, however, if you, if you provide to them uh, a, a code when you order this that is NMS, so NMS21, that will give you a 5% discount. And if you forget that code, tell them you watch this video uh, from Nixon Motorsports and uh, they'll provide a 5% discount for you as well, okay? Well, that's it for today. Um, again, I appreciate your support. Uh, I have um, many comments coming in uh, that I do appreciate. I try to respond as quick as I can. So keep those coming. Tell your friends about this channel. Um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoy it. You have a great day. Bye. Ciao.